Good evening, God saints, and welcome to Scott's Chapel Online Ministries. This is uh, our Bible study night, and we're going to have some thoughts to share with you, prayers and concerns. We want to take our attention to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, beginning at the 23rd verse. Matthew 8 beginning at the 23rd verse. Then he got into the boat and his disciples followed him. Suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. He replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. We want to talk for a few moments on the subject of the awareness of his presence, the awareness of his presence. Now, uh, previous Sunday, we did being in God's presence. And I want to anchor this point and I want to give the importance of being in God's presence because we ask for so many things. And sometimes our prayers go amiss or we're not asking for the right thing. Uh, what we should be asking for is to be aware of God's presence with us all the time, to be in his presence. For I believe that if we're in his presence, great things will occur. But let us go through this because it's especially important because we ex that we experience God's presence because we're going through storms in our lives and we will go through storms. And we need to be keenly aware that God in his grace and his love, he is aware of our needs and neediness. And we learn that everybody, goes through difficult times, which are storms in their lives by one kind or another. The reality for each of us is that we are in a storm. We have just emerged from a storm or you're about to go into one. And we need the comfort from the word of God that gives us assurance of God's presence in the darkness and in the storms. I remember Eliu in the book of Job as, where is God who giveth songs in the night when Job was going through his storm? David in the 42nd Psalm answered, in the night his song shall be with me. David was convinced that even though I am going through a storm that I'm going through life's challenges. God's presence is with me. But this passage in Matthew is very interesting. I believe Paul went through uh, similar storms in his life. And another scripture I want you to write down is Romans uh, chapter 8, beginning at the 35th verse 35 and 36 that who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
This is for everyone that will go through dark valleys sooner or later. All of us will get sick. All of us will become ill. Some will be permanent. It is an illusion that this side of heaven, all diseases are going to be wiped out. All pain is going to be removed. There will be no tears. That you won't have any problems. But the truth of the matter is that we all have a cross to bear. There are going to be periods of suffering, bereavement, discouragement, frustration, dangers, and difficulties. So I'm asking the question, and I want to learn, and I want to strive to be in God's presence, to have an awareness of his presence. And I say awareness of his presence because when we talk about it in the sermon, God is present everywhere. He's omnipresent. He's there all the time. There's no place that God is not. I know that because the psalm writer says in the 139th Psalm, verse 7, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, Surely the darkness would hide me and the light become night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day for darkness is as light to you. He's talking about God's omnipresence. He's always there. He's always available. It's just that we get to a point because we are so confused or we are so challenged or we are so overwhelmed by the storms that come in our lives that we're unaware of his presence. That we're not uh, aware of his active presence in our lives. And then we talked about his manifest presence in our lives, the active moving of God in our midst and being with us personally and personally revealing himself. So I want an awareness of that. I want an awareness that I will never leave you nor forsake you. So let's go back to the text. Now remember, Jesus had been ministering and he had been demonstrating his power, spiritual authority over all things. And he's using this as an example to teach his disciples those truths that he's already spoken of as they went about uh, ministry in the region. And then he got into the boat. And his disciples followed him. Suddenly, a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. Verse 24, God has given us go, make disciples. He's given us commands. He's given us his word. He says, you're going to let us go to this other side. Let us go. But all the while he was with them as God is with us. But Jesus was sleeping, meaning that his omnipresence was with him, with them, but that manifest active presence of moving, of action, was not being activated at that particular time. There was no need because Jesus was with them. Verse 25, the disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. They're coming to God with the obvious, as we do. 
the obvious hurt, the situations that we face that's immediate in our lives. There's nothing wrong with that. But he replied in verse 26, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? And before I continue reading 26, I got, that's what it was. It, it, he was chastising them because of their lack of faith. You little, you of little faith. Why are you so afraid? You have my presence. I am with you. I love you. And that's why God doesn't want us to trip over the uh, things that are going on in our lives. It's because he is with us. Why are you upset? My presence is here. I'll never leave you. So why are you worried about what is on those things on the outsides of the perils of life and the distress and the persecution? I've made you more than a conqueror. You are going to this other side. You have the victory. Nothing is going to separate you from me. But you need an awareness. You need to move from a little awareness to a bigger awareness. Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves. And it was completely calm. Hmm. See, our lives will become stronger and spiritually deepen as we move through our storm. As we learn the awareness of the presence of God. The Apostle John learned about the presence of God while he was on Patmos in song, songs of joy and praise. At midnight, David arose as he wrote psalms to give thanks to God. As he was going through tremendous adversity and problems. Paul had realized and told the Corinthians that when I am weak, then God is strongest and manifests himself more. He reveals, he manifests his presence more in our lives as we go through the storms. The bigger the storm, the bigger the blessing. And it's very important that we learn to sense the awareness of his presence so that it helps us to deal with life's storms. The cause of the storm is not the primary issue. It's irrelevant. The thing is, is we must trust Jesus, even in the midst of our storms, even in the midst of trusting in his word that we will go to the other side. But we get so consumed, and that's the tactic of the enemy, is to take our eyes off of Jesus and to place it on what is happening around us. And we must move past those things. God's words assures us that Jesus will provide for us. Sometimes we may not see Jesus, but he sees us. Sometimes we cannot get to him but Jesus is already there getting to you uh, when we don't know what to do just go back to the word trust him and believe him we need to get and says where the writer of Hebrews says in the 13th he is himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. And why an awareness of God's presence is important? Because it comforts us. Each of us knows that when we are alone, it's much easy, easier to feel fearful. But if we have a friend that sticketh closer than a brother in time of trouble, we can take comfort in his presence. Jesus has given us the comforter, his spirit, the Holy Spirit, to be with us always. 
so that I can be in his presence and know that I am in his presence. It also makes sure that we are more courageous. It gives us courage to face what lies before us. God didn't promise to remove all the problems from our lives when we pick up our cross, when we come to him, when we uh, claim to be Christians. Your problems don't go away. Just because you come to church or just because you pray doesn't make the problems go away, but his presence makes a difference and gives you the courage to get up, keep moving, Keep moving forward and pressing towards the goal of the high calling. And lastly, it makes us more confident. We become confident that God's word is true, that God is true. And confidence is directly related to our knowing that a current trial or time of trial will come to an end. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. I will make it to the other side. See, the storm does not matter. Say that. The storm doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Forget about it. It's there. What are you going to do? Bada bing, bada boom. Eh? Politics. Forget about it. Jobs, economy crazy family. Forget about it. When you got Jesus, you'll have comfort. You'll be courageous to face all of that foolishness. Face it by the word of God and trust and confidence in what God will do. He says, I've made you more than a conqueror. You are a conqueror. You have already won the battle. Just hold on. Just wait. The storm doesn't matter, but what matters is that we are living and walking by faith. When Jesus says in Matthew chapter 4 and 4, God wants us, and I'm paraphrasing, to live by what he says, not by what we see. He wants us to trust him with every part of our lives, even when it seems like the storm is about to overwhelm us. And if you can do that, then everything God says will be done for you. Hmm. Isaiah 53 and 1, which says, Who has believed our message? Who To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Do you believe in the messenger? and his message. God's word for God's people. My brothers and sisters, just seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Quit asking for all this other stuff, for water to get out of the boat, for the waves and the storms to never come, but just cling to him. Be aware that God is with you. Just be in his presence, because if I'm in his presence, nothing can snatch me out of the love of Christ. That's what Romans was talking about. Paul was talking about nothing can snatch me out of his hand. No situation is so great that it can conquer what God is going to do. And if I'm in his presence, he will fix me. Just like he fixed that man called Legion that had the legion of demons in the inside of him and Jesus cast them out. And that man was sitting at Jesus' feet, clothed and in his right mind. When I get in God's presence, he will make my mind right. He will make my heart right. He will create in me a clean heart and renew in me an upright understanding. He will give me that comfort and the courageousness and the confidence that I need to keep on keeping on. Hmm. That's the awareness of God's presence. So pray and ask for it. And all you'll get it, get that, his presence. God bless you. Holla.